Okay. So, hi everyone. Um, thank you very much for joining us today. Um, we are going to start, and I'm sure some others will join throughout, but my name is Suzanne. I'm the marketing manager for Switch Packaging. Um, you'll soon hear from Mark Herbie, the sales and commercial director, with a lot more insight into the industry and the trends. Um, but I'll also be facilitating today as well. Um, so, firstly, again, thank you very much for joining. I know that initially it was a bit delayed. Um, Mark, unfortunately, actually had COVID. Um, and he's been a bit of a trooper and um, is here with us today. So please do bear with him. Um, he's got a glass of water on side, so um, he's all geared up. Um, but yeah, in a moment we will begin. I will pass you over to Mark. Um, just a couple of housekeeping things. This is being recorded. Um, so please, if you could keep your um, video and uh, speaker off for the moment. However, we do have a Q&A session um, in the, um, at the end of the uh, PowerPoint presentation. So. Um, which we really want to be interactive. So please do answer, ask any questions in the chat box throughout. This will be monitored and then we can bring those to a close towards the end. Um, but that's enough for me and I'll hand you over to Mark um, and I will share my screen. Here we go. Thank you, Suzanne. Um, yep, I can see the screen. Thank you very much for that. Um, hi, everyone. Uh, firstly, thank you very much for joining our webinar. Uh, my name is Mark Kirby from Switch Packaging. Um, I've worked in the packaging industry for nearly 20 years now um, and have a lot of experience in the food and beverage sector. Uh, we'll run through the agenda in a moment, but I would want to encourage you all to ask questions throughout using the chat box. Um, I have my colleague here, Suzanne, as you've met already, um, who will help with the um, question and answer session afterwards. Um, obviously, bear in mind those questions you put through. So let's begin. So today, I really want to give you an overview um, of some of the key material, material and design considerations of the food and beverage packaging industry. Uh, we'll be delving into uh, the food and beverage landscape, considering the rise in sustainable preferences, post-pandemic shifts and future tax implications, um, material capabilities, including pulp, solid board and corrugated, and the applications as well, of course. Um, key requirements for packaging in this sector, and latest trends, um, including hygiene, temperature, and other factors. Uh, projects which help demonstrate what we have discussed. Um, and lastly, obviously the Q&A session. So starting with the landscape itself. Let's begin by setting the scene. I am sure many of you have joined on here today knowing that there have been some radical changes in the food and beverage packaging industry over the last couple of years. So how much, Nick, thank you. Uh, so how much is food and beverage packaging an issue and is it an urgent requirement to change things? Studies demonstrate that food and beverage packaging is a major source of the 269,000 tons of plastic pollution in the world's oceans. With the heightened focus on sustainability and consumer preferences, uh, this shows that businesses need to respond. This combined with the lo long, how long it takes for some food packages to biodegrade, uh, make it clear there's an urgent requirement to act and protect our planet. You can see here that it takes on average around 450 years for a plastic bottle to biodegrade, an awful long time, uh, source from the food print. And other stats show how 80% of marine litter starts life on land. Uh, again, source EcoWatch and that 12.7 million tons of plastic enters the marine environment every year. And that source is from the natural history. So um, here's a TED talk by Vanessa Grondin, a food engineer, explaining how the food and beverage packaging industry is impacting the environment itself. So let's see how the numbers tell the story quite clearly. Uh, please, if you could play the video, Suzanne. Um, I have no sound. Bear with one second. Quality. Is that better? In that's it. That's it. Thank last you. Last 70 years, the packaging industry has been instrumental for the improvement of our food quality and safety. But where we gained in practicality and safety, we lost 
in our capacity to manage our environmental footprint and our waste materials. So why does all this matter? Well, the pollution generated by food packaging has reached a critical point. And as the world's population increases, so will the problem. The main issue is that food packaging is a single use item that is immediately disposed of once consumed. And I guess there is some urgency to act as the quantity of plastic that was produced from 2000 to 2010 is about the same quantity that was produced the entire century that preceded. Thank you, Suzanne. So how does food and beverage compare to other sectors? As you can see from the pie chart here, food and beverage packaging contributed to 61% of the total packaging waste across the different sectors shown. Um, the source here for action to tackle the issue of plastic waste. This is quite shocking, really, it really is, and demonstrates how much of a priority it is for this industry to be more sustainable. But what do these stats really mean for, the, for our environments? Excuse me. As picked up briefly in the TED talk we have just watched, uh, plastic packaging is already causing great damage to the environment, including our oceans and landfill sites. When plastic packaging breaks down into smaller pieces, these disperse throughout the ocean environment. These microplastics act as sponges, accumulating toxic chemicals already in the oceans. They are known to be eaten by marine creatures from plankton at the bottom of the ocean and the toxic chemicals they collect may be concentrated as they pass up through the food chain, obviously into human beings. Recent studies have found microplastics not only in seafood, such as oysters, mussels and fish, but also in sea salt, tap water, tap water and wait for it, even beer itself. We, with scientists highlighting the need for further research into the risk of human health, which are yet really unknown. So how about on land? Much of our non-biodegradable packaging end up in landfills and can be incredibly dangerous to the environment. Landfills not only release large amounts of methane and other toxic chemicals, which can contribute to global warming um, and groundwater pollution, but they can also result in a loss of species as well. Research has shown that between 30 to 300 species are lost per hectare of landfill um, site, which can significantly impact the biodiversity of our planet. It can reduce soil quality and fertility, which can mean that plants cannot grow or thrive in the area, effectively wasting the environment and playing a key role in the food chain. But it isn't all doom and gloom, and it isn't too late for us to make a change. So there is positively, um, there's positivity around this topic and to address this, changes need to be made from government and legislation as well. The UK government is committed to eliminating the UK's avoidable plastic waste by 2042. We believe businesses should use this time to make meaningful changes with real long-term benefits to the environment and their business as well. One way is by introducing the plastic packaging tax, which is coming into life in April 2022. This will massively impact companies that are using plastic with less than 30% recycled material. There will be a tax added to this type of packaging, um, which will likely be passed through the supply chain, which will be passed through the supply chain, meaning that after April 2022, a like for like cost of plastic versus pulp may not be that different at all. Okay, we've already recently seen changes made to reduce plastic packaging such as banning plastic straws, cotton buds, stirrers and bags, for example. But this is just the first step and it won't be long, it won't be too long until similar plastics are banned within the food and packaging industry. It's fair to say that over the last five years, things have changed a lot, an awful lot. Climate change has accelerated and we are seeing huge changes to our environment as a consequence. So what does this mean for our consumer preferences? Well, of the consumers surveyed for Eon's renewable um, returns report, 72% said they pay attention to whether a business acts in a climate friendly way. And 65% feel it's important that products or services um, they buy do not harm the environment. 
the shift in attitude um, has only been accelerated by COVID as since lockdown. 81% have become increasingly concerned about the environment, environmental issues, and half of adults have already taken action, buying less plastic, recycling more, and even spending less time in the shower, for example. This demonstrates that not only are the government incentivizing sustainable choices for businesses, but that there is also pressure from consumers and, and also your supply chain. Unfortunately, those who don't listen will inevitably be left behind. What else has changed over the last few years? Well, there has been a recent surge in e-commerce in the food and beverage industry as companies responded to the pandemic and the restrictions. And this is only set to rise and rise quite quickly as well. Uh, buying preferences and behaviours have evolved and adapted, which has seen a huge uplift on buying online. Uh, Amazon sales up by 37% year on year in quarter three 2020 alone. And the source for that is e-consultancy 2020. With the restrictions imposed across the nation, many businesses have pivoted and, and continue to make sales through e-commerce. Think of many restaurants that shops um, that, and, and shops that were now delivered to you it didn't before. Um, there's been a huge, obviously huge rise in that. In response to this surge, brands have had to review and upgrade their packaging or create new designs altogether. Not only the material and how it looks, but reviewing their packaging lines, sizes and designs as a whole. It's all well and good saying that companies need to look to alternatives and be sustainable, um, but how and at what cost, if any? The food and beverage sector serves a huge variety of outlets from supermarkets to restaurants, events, institutions, while, say, while solving some unique business challenges. Companies need education, guidance and support in making process of sustainable food and beverage packaging uh, efficient and making it exciting as well. Whether you are an owner or an employee of a business, we all have a responsibility to do our bit. We need to offer support and share expertise, not with a, not with a, a commitment to sell, but in a bid to help save the planet. Okay, so now that we have set the scene, let's go on to the material capabilities on more sustainable packaging options. So let's be upfront and highlight the queries of paper packaging and how we can work to overcome these. Firstly, compared with plastic, paper packaging has been shown to demonstrate a reduction in shelf life, shelf life of fresh food produce. However, as we um, will all um, discuss a little later, there are improvements being made to better this um, and obviously some coatings already exist which can be used on paper packaging to help improve uh, the barrier and shelf life itself. Secondly, on average, the unit cost is currently higher for paper alternatives to plastic. However, this, this, this does vary a lot depending on which paper material and unit quantity, not to mention what we have just discussed with new taxes coming in um, very shortly. On a design note, the nature of paper packaging means that it cannot be made transparent to view the produce inside. Um, for example, with a window. But with the research showing how consumers prefer sustainable packaging, we would argue that this is a very small disadvantage in using paper alternatives and shouldn't be a deterrent. Okay, so what is molded pulp? So although less known than corrugated and solid board, pulp has been around for decades, but it's only recently becoming more widely used. This is a material um, is often used to replace polystyrene and foams due to its ability to be molded around virtually anything. This is a huge benefit and whilst there are many alternatives to plastics, there are not so many for polystyrene, especially considering the impact of polystyrene and its impact on our environment, taking up to 500 years to biodegrade. There are two types of pulp, recycled based pulp and virgin fibre pulp. The latter is more widely used in the food and beverage industry. Virgin fibre pulp is made from renewable and biodegradable raw materials. As an example, um, is bagasse or from sugarcane, a sugarcane byproduct. You can see this on the slide on the bottom left, uh, the white one especially. This material is very durable and firm due to its fibrous texture and is used by companies 
uh, we're avoiding cross contamination, um, which is essential. Um, it can be used for direct through contact, for example, as well as providing a very high level of protection due to the molding process. Um, and obviously sustainable coatings, pulp is also refrigerator safe and can withstand high temperatures between 160 to 180 degrees. Its tough nature means it can easily be stored and can help reduce transportation emissions and warehouse storage space, saving the environment and money at the same time, which is an added bonus. You will have, you will have likely come across pulp being used for fresh fruit trays and ripe fruit to protecting glass jars, for example. In regards to the disadvantage of the pulp, it is important to highlight that it's only suitable for high unit quantities that exceeds 10,000 units. And that currently the unit cost is slightly higher than polystyrene and foam alternatives, but obviously that's before the tax implementations uh, make a difference in April next year. Okay, so moving on to solid board. This packaging material is often found with um, the food and beverage sector, the outer packaging um, and sleeves. It's very popular among products and produce, which need to withstand very low temperatures. It's also grease resistant with the appropriate coatings as well. So it's often used for cakes and frozen products. For example, if you look for your fridge and freezer at home, um, I can be almost certain that you'll find some packaging uh, made from solid board. Another reason why solid board is popular within the industry is because it's very good for branding, um, helping to get your products noticed on the shelves. This can include falling, embossing, and varnishing options as well. However, solid board is rarely used on its own due to its le um, low level of protection for um, heavy or fragile objects. You require material with provides greater protection. Now, we all know how popular corrugated is uh, within the packaging industry, and quite rightly so, so as well. Um, and food and beverage is no exception. So corrugated can be considered uh, your happy medium. It provides a high level of protection and can be used to create beautiful visual designs at the same time. As well as this, with extra coatings, it can also be made microwave and refrigerator safe as well. So why not use corrugated? If you need a higher degree of protection, pulp will be more of a sensible option uh, for protecting glass jars or heavy items due to its molded nature. So now that we've delved into the benefits and drawbacks of paper packaging materials, why don't we consider using multiple materials and exploiting their benefits? Uh, this is what we call composite packaging. It is a great to use different materials for different aspects of the design, and this can often be used for more complicated and extensive packaging. For example, pulp can be used as an inner tray along the solid board, which can be used as a sleeve. Uh, we will show some examples of this later on. <clears throat> this leads us nicely onto sharing our expertise into the key requirements um, and design considerations for this sector and also the latest trends, some of which you may have come across already um, and some which you may not. Okay, so um, produce um, perishability is a key consideration for the food and beverage industry. Um, and being honest, most sustainable paper packaging do reduce the shelf life of fresh produce compared to plastic alternatives. But there are ways to help improve this. There are paper packaging materials that can be treated in a sustainable way, um, improving their shelf life. Uh, an example of this is using, for example, a clay coat, which acts as a barrier preventing the air from getting in or out. Um, also can be um, also moisture resist resistant at the same time. An example, um, this is something which is constantly evolving uh, with paper packaging options and needs constant review um, of which technology, technology is always being looked at. The food and beverage sector is a fast paced in industry. So therefore might have time sensitive supply chain which need to be efficient and streamlined. For this, it's important to consider that different materials uh, will have different lead times. This will, be, this will vary depending on your specific supply chain and partners, but also design requirements as well. For example, corrugating a solid board have relatively short lead times in a normal world. This is challenged at the moment by the supply shortages, by the supply and demand of paper. 
Um, whereas hold can be can be longer, can take longer. To help improve lead times, we have introduced a stop and serve service. So, for example, to elaborate a bit more on that, um, if we, for example, looked at an annual usage um, for a company, um, we could then determine a, a commercial proposal that actually would add the stop and serve into it. So, for example, we would actually have X amount made for you, and then you would actually have two or three deliveries a week or, or a month, for example, um, of obviously the stock that you needed. This obviously reduces the stock that you have to hold, which obviously saves you money um, and gives you a, a much better service going forward. It also means that obviously we can look at better pricing for higher quantities um, and therefore at the same time negate the, the long lead times at the moment. Um, it's, a, it's a very much a win-win situation uh, for companies to use that service. Okay, the food and beverage industry has a unique demand for hygiene and safe food uh, handling. This is a high priority that needs to be well considered throughout the design and material selection process. Plastics are now being effective in reducing the risk of transmission of bacteria and easily cleanable. However, there are sustainable paper alternatives which can be used. For example, sugarcane, which we mentioned before, um, pulp is made from raw materials which reduces the risk of transmission in fact, again, it can be used for direct food contact. Um, have you seen the recent bottles as well that are made of pulp that are being currently over undergoing experiments and actually have been on the market for a little while now as well? Likewise, corrugated can be made with sustainable coatings, as I mentioned earlier, which make it food and drink safe. Temperature is also a very important factor within the food and beverage sector. This is a case for uh, food and drinks which need to be kept refrigerated, um, stored hot and microwavable at the same time. The primary paper packaging options for this is often solid board material. Why? Well, the different types of solid board available ensure it's moisture, heat and grease resistant, which again, depend on the coatings you use, which make it great for fresh and frozen products. Unit quantities are also an important factor uh, which aren't often um, considered up front, to be honest. This will influence material selection and design. For example, corrugated can be used for virtually all unit quantities, from smallest to highest, due to it being so readily available and established in its manufacturing process. However, pulp is only suitable, as mentioned before, for project, projects, units that are around 10,000. This is due to the upfront, for example, molding costs, meaning that pulp would be feasible or economic or sensible option for units under 10,000, especially with the food and beverage industry, which has a tendency towards price sensitive products. Now, looking closer at the design considerations, does your package require bespoke design or should it? So we often get a lot of people approach us who are currently experiencing breakages or damage to their food and beverage products or that are guilty of, of overpacking, which, which is a trend at the moment. The food and beverage sector is so vast that it can vary from fresh fruit to glass jars and custom designs can suit all project requirements to help prevent these damages, which can come to a lot of money uh, on a monthly annual basis. The most suitable pa packaging material um, for fully customized designs is moldy pulp. Pulp can be molded around virtually anything and provides a very high level of protection to prevent damage uh, and breakages going forward. And lastly, let's look at why branding is so important for food and beverage products. According to Retail Minded, 52% of online customers report they would continue purchasing from the same company if they received their orders in premium packaging. Also, to reach age as well, consumers' preference for the sustainable packaging, the Guardian conducted a, survey, a study and found that 70% of consumers view brands that use sustainable packaging and recycled materials more favorable. So what materials can help create a lasting impression and help your product stand out on the shelves? Often the answer for outer packaging is solid board. Um, solid board is best for printing uh, and special graphics effects such as falling, for example. However, corrugated is also a sensible option for printing high quality designs and provides a much higher level of protection. It is important to be aware that you cannot print on pulp. You can emboss or deboss it, um, and you can have different colors, 
when you do have different colors, it can, it can raise them in all the quantity, but it's not suitable for printing itself. So looking into this composite packaging will allow us to create both protective and beautiful designs. Regarding design, it's important to remember that the natural look is often more popular these days. So more of the sort of the brown look rather than the white. Um, to, and to clearly indicate the sustainability of the um, produce and brand itself. Now, projects in action. So I'm gonna give you a few examples of what we've been talking about um, to help demonstrate this more. So um, hope I haven't overloaded you too much information. Um, this section is literally to give you those examples. So here are a couple of recent pulp projects which we've, we've, we've been working on. So the first project I wanna demonstrate is what you can see on the left. Um, this, was, this is for a, a large blue chip company um, and it's um, basically uh, used to pack sausage rolls. So at the moment, um, plastic trays, one use time only plastic trays are being used. Um, we are looking at using a pulp sugar cane um, tray as discussed before for direct food contact to actually replace these. Um, environmentally speaking, um, it, would, it would really help the environment if this can be done. Um, obviously this is the first sort of to market um, project that we're doing. And obviously if, it's, if successful, um, it can actually take out and uh, uh, reduce a lot of uh, millions of different plastic trays. The second project is on the right. Um, now this uses moldy pulp to hold in place at coconut oil securely. Um, the oil was very heavy with fragile glass um, and we had to carry out multiple drop tests on this obviously before knowing that actually we had the right design. Um, this actually eliminated all damages that the actual customer was actually having, um, which obviously they were very pleased about, but the actual um, financial gain from that um, was huge as well. Um, and obviously customer satisfaction and obviously protecting their brand um, was even more important. Now on to this one here. So on to corrugated projects. The first you can see is a corrugated design used for a company called Hunter and Gather. Um, as you can see, it's, it's a corrugated design with a integrated fitting. Um, the great thing about it was it can be used for retail or e-commerce. It's mostly used for e-commerce. Um, and obviously when you do open it, you have that wow factor where you actually have the branded and print on the inside. Um, I believe there's um, some basic print on the outside, but it's the inside when they opened it that the customer really wanted to get that wow factor um, with the consumers. And it went down very, very well. The second project um, is on the right, um, is used for a takeaway box for a restaurant in London. Following the pandemic, they shifted their business model and went down the e-commerce route. Um, corrugated provide a high level of protection um, even during transportation. Um, but the box was also, uh, cart was also used to A, be very different. As you can see, the design is very different to be unique. Um, to have also be able to print on the inside with the ingredients and instructions, for example, it is a, a premium product, um, but also so it can be sent out uh, and also be protected. But at the same time, when it's being used, uh, I've been informed that a lot of people are, are using it to hold stationery in. So again, another great use for it. Um, to be recycled for something else completely. Um, and that was, that was really good to hear when I heard that. Okay, now as mentioned, composite packaging is becoming increasingly popular and it's here, um, and here is a project that we've recently worked on. As you can see, solid board was used as the outer box to allow for the high quality branding and premium look and feel. Um, and moldy pulp was used for the inside. Um, tray to provide protection for the glass bottles. So again, using those different materials as one um, has really worked really, really well. Um, clients uh, was extremely pleased, um, no damages, no breakages. And again, uh, the look and feel was, was very premium, which is obviously what the product does need as it is itself. Okay, now that's it. Um, I hope that I've given you some good background. Um, and understanding of obviously different paper packaging materials available and also design considerations as well. Um, I've highlighted four key take home messages just to finish up on. So avoid overpacking, um, avoid overpackaging, think about using composite packaging, um, consult before you commit, that's always key, um, and basically rethink, redesign and reuse. Um, now, 
food and beverage packaging uh, can sometimes seem like a bit of a minefield, to be honest, um, which is why at Switch we hope to guide and support in making the process easy and simple, making it a, a good journey, basically. Um, ultimately, taking the pressure off yourselves as well. Let's build a better future for our children and future generations. Collaborate and change our approach now so that they don't have to worry about their quality of life or environment they're surrounded by in the future. At Switch, we are proud that we can source and create packaging alternatives that look great, are protective and cost-effective, but most importantly, are recyclable, um, compostable, and biodegradable at the same time. Now, I'm gonna stop there. Um, obviously, we now have, and thank you for listening, by the way, we now obviously have our question and answer session. So I'll hand back over to Suzanne, um, who obviously will take it forward from there. Yeah, hi, Mark. Um, thank you, yeah, very much. Really insightful points raised there. And uh, there are lots of questions in the Q&A, which is always great to hear. Um, so I'll delve straight into those. Um, so firstly, what is the cost of the tax and implications of this? How will this be charged to us? Okay, so the tax itself at the moment is going to be £200 a tonne. Um, that will be uh, charged by the government directly to um, companies, manufacturers that obviously are producing it. What then will happen is it will come down the chain uh, and it will be increasing the unit price that uh, consumers, customers will pay. Perfect. Lovely. Um, does it cost extra to add coatings to the material to make it refrigerator and high temperature safe? It does. It depends on what coatings you look at. Um, all the ones that we use here are sustainable. Um, it does cost more because it's an extra process to the manufacturing process. Um, however, the benefits that can give um, normally very much outweigh the extra cost. And the extra cost actually isn't that much more. Lovely. Thank you. Um, a question from Jason now. So can cellulose films be used as the window, which you mentioned previous? Sorry, can you repeat that for me, Suzanne? Yes, can cellulose films be used as the window? Not really, no. The, the only way to actually have a window on a product is to have a, an acrylic window. Um, unfortunately, I understand um, why the gentleman is asking. Unfortunately, um, they are not sustainable and obviously they're not recyclable either. Um, the, there is technology being looked at in regards to changing that. Um, so others like what the gentleman said would work. Uh, but at the moment, no. Um, if you have a window, it needs to be acrylic. Um, a lot of people actually have decided that they want a window, but they don't actually need to have anything coating it at all. So a lot of people have now gone for an open window. Um, but again, you have to be careful because obviously of security, for example, and tampering, especially on food. Obviously, you can't have that on food. Lovely. Thank you. Um, one question from Mary. Um, is there an oven proof alternative to foil ready meal trays? At the moment, no, there's not. Um, I do know that that has been, is being worked on and we have actually had um, conversations recently here about that as well. Um, and there, there are, so for example, you can have a pulp tray that would work in that respect and could go in the oven as well. Um, but obviously you need to find out a way to actually apply the film uh, with a certain adhesive and that's the technology that's being worked on at the moment. So not at the moment, but hopefully in the near future. Absolutely. Um, a question from David. So how long does it take for pulp to biodegrade even with coatings on it? Yep. So actually it's about five weeks, even with coatings. A little different to polystyrene then. <laughs> Absolutely. A lot, li little different to sort of 500 odd years or, or whatever it was. Um, I think it's 450 years. But uh, yes, there's a massive, massive difference and obviously a great benefit as well. Perfect. Um, Question here, could you please explain a bit more about composite packaging and whether it's recyclable? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, actually I can do better than that. Can you just pass a naked shade for me, please, Rob? Um, so I'm just gonna pull this up to the camera, thank you, cheers. Um, so for example, we actually have, and they won't mind me, they won't, won't mind me um, uh, saying this, but we actually have a company called The Naked Shade that we look after, um, and they have composite packaging. We do, we do actually do fulfillment for them at the same time. Um, so on the, I hope you can see this, but on the outside, you've basically got a corrugated, simple um, 047 or 0427 box, um, which opens very nicely, all integrated, all die cut as well. But then actually inside, you actually have, I think you can see that there, um, a pulp tray, which is an insert that is molded specifically for the product. 
in a presentation way as well, in a presentable way. Um, and you, you actually basically have the two composites working together. What you can then do as well is actually you can print the outer box as I have here, bear with me for a second. Um, you can print the outer box to have obviously their design, their branding on at the same time. And you can even have, for example, on the back they put some instructions in regards to how to look after and how to use it. So that's probably the best example I can give you. Um, and again, uh, a lot of different uh, companies and sectors use this. Um, and again, the food and beverage sector also to use it as well. Lovely. Thank you very much. Um, OK, so a bit of a research question here from Peter. He has said, how much contemporary research exists on food safety impacts of greater recycled packaging content? that food manufacturers moving to 30% material can use, especially in longer shelf life products. Also, where's the best place for manufacturers to engage with this type of research? Yep, so um, an awful lot of research um, is and has been done. The research itself too has started about probably five or six years ago um, and has continued ever since. They're making great strides um, in regards to finding solutions for, for, for various different obstacles. Um, to be honest with you, the research it's done is done privately. Um, the government is doing some research, but not an awful lot. But most of it's industry that's industry doing it. So the, the very large uh, manufacturers, for example, um, blue chip companies um, are putting millions of pounds into this research. Uh, you can find it generally online um, by literally tapping in, for example, uh, food, biodegradable research versus plastics. And you'll find quite a lot come up, to be honest with you. And there's also a few YouTube videos as well of some of the experiments that have been done. Um, so it, it is possible to look, to look at that. But it's, it's an ongoing research project, which, which is costing multiple millions of pounds. Um, but definitely go online when you get a chance um, and, and have a look and you'll find quite a lot on there. That's great. I might even be able to send Peter following this meeting as well. Mm, um, yeah, good. I had a question on top of that as well. Do you foresee B BRC changing any of their standards or requirements in relation to additional recycled content in food and beverage packaging in the UK? Well, possibly so. So <clears throat> BRC is obviously always adapting and changing and quite rightly so as well. Um, they do identify with um, the paper based, especially the pulp and sugar, sugar cane material, they do identify with that. Um, and it actually is within the BRC already as well. Um, so, uh, but I, I'd imagine it's always gonna definitely change. Um, the good thing about sugarcane, for example, is that it's naturally, um, it's, it's naturally got its own sort of a uh, um, substrate and, and basis and fiber, which means that it doesn't actually penetrate the food in any way or cross contaminate it. Um, so again, that is covered by, by BRC, but again, they, they probably will change um, as they go in regards to what they require. That's great. That is the end of the questions. Um, I will, if anyone's going more, please do type them in now. Um, but if not, I will also type in Mark's contact details, unless Mark, there's anything else that you want to pick up on at all? No, not at all. No, I'm, I'm glad that um, obviously I've been able to give everyone a good idea on the paper packaging versus um, plastics and obviously in regards to the environment as well. Um, obviously here at Switch, we are very passionate about the environment. That's why Switch was created 10 years ago, specifically for environmentally friendly packaging and design. Um, so uh, I'm glad that I've been able to uh, obviously talk to you all about it and, and thank you all very much for your time. I appreciate it. Yeah, thank you very much. And Mark's details are now in the chat um, and we can follow up with any questions that you have. Um, please, yeah, do get in touch. Thank you very much, everyone. Thanks, everyone.